I'm going to do a quick breakdown on what a pony chiller is because it's a common term that gets thrown around and I find that actually not very many people actually know what it means or what it's representing. So in short, a pony chiller is a backup or a support chiller to the primary chillers on the loop. To give you some examples of this, uh, one facility I used to service, we had three chillers in total. We had two primary chillers and we had a pony chiller. The two primary chillers were 300 tons each. Uh, yeah, that's right. They were 300 tons each. And those were the two that cycled lead lag. Everything ran through those two chillers. And then we had a pony chiller. All these were air-cooled. The pony chiller was, I think, 150 or 200 tons. That was it. Wasn't much. So much, much smaller chiller. And that chiller only came into operation when the two primary chillers failed. So when neither of those chillers could run or when we had circumstances that for some reason those could not keep up, then the pony chiller would be engaged. That pretty well sums up a lot of what pony chillers can do. They're intended to be just kind of a, a versatile backup plan. They're your plan B. If your main chillers fail, it's there. Or in some circumstances, let's say you were trying to optimize and you didn't have enough load to want to bring on or need to bring on a second full-size chiller. Then the pony chiller could be used as a in-between staging. And so where the primary chiller comes on, the lead chiller, it will stage up once it maxes out Say you've just got a little bit more load that it needs, but you don't actually need the full size of the next one. Well, that pony chiller, which would be a much smaller size, uh, cheaper machine to run and operate, it would come online and make up that little bit of difference and then help keep the loop under control. And then if things continue to scale and you needed two full size chillers, then you could drop the pony chiller back out and run and operate on the two larger ones. Um, another example of how these could be used is on the low end of the staging cycle. So let's say that for whatever reason, we're trying to keep the plant and the loop online, but we've just, we're in between load cycles. So let's say we're doing a manufacturing run and for whatever reason, equipment's down and we're in between load cycles, but we want to keep the loop processed and everything online, but there's not enough load to actually run the full size chillers. Well, if we have a pony chiller or a couple of pony chillers off to the side that are significantly smaller. So to, to give some parameters here, let's say the main chillers were, you know, 2000 tons, 3000 tons, somewhere in there. Well, we could have a pony chiller that's three to 500 tons and have that sitting off to the side. So when we're in that in-between state in our control sequence or our load sequence, how about that? Then we could shut down the main chillers because we don't have enough to operate them anyway to not and not keep them online. And there's no point in having them cycle. So we could shut them down, intentionally bring on the pony chillers and allow the pony chillers to float that little bit of load while the equipment is down in whatever process there's manufacturing change or service or whatever's going on it can maintain that low end load just to keep the loop temperatures down until the equipment is brought back online say the manufacturing equipment or whatever the case may be that is brought back online and the load is re returned to the loop and then all the the large primary chillers are able to stage back up and they've got something to work with at that point. So those are some examples of how pony chillers can get used. Um, you could have some smaller, say, centrifugal pony chillers at times, but a lot of them I've worked with, they were typically at some kind of screw machine or occasionally maybe they were a large scroll, but they're usually some kind of screw. You'll have a plant full of, say, centrifugal stacked in there, and then you'll have some 
smaller tonnage uh, screw off to the side. Uh, I've had some plants that had a couple of, uh, they were what, 500? Yeah, 500 ton centrifugals. And then we had a 300 ton screw off to the side. And it's purpose, it was technically a pony chiller. Uh, and so every time we had an issue and the centrifugals were down, or if they went into a really low load state and we couldn't maintain operation on the centrifugals because just there just wasn't enough there, then we could cycle the plant over and run that screw chiller as, as, the, as the low end pony. And even if it was unloading considerably and just barely needing to stay on line, it could, because it's positive displacement, it could float that low end load without any trouble. Whereas our centrifugals, they'd start pushing their lift boundaries and it would, it would start causing some issues and they weren't very stable at that low end. So when we didn't need that, we could drop the centrifugals out, bring that screw chiller in and we were floating along just fine. It also came in handy we had like at that particular plant we had some tower issues off and on and it would cause our we'd have to shut the centrifugals down because of that and because we had really high uh, condenser water temps and we just couldn't get them down that screw pony chiller while it's sure it's less efficient it would do it it would it would just it's a positive displacement screw compressor it's going to just take it on and it's going to see that it's just a high head pressure but it's just going to push through so uh, in those circumstances where we, we had too much lift to keep our centrifugals online, we were at least able to keep the loop under control and somewhat processed while the issues got resolved by utilizing that pony chiller. So it is a support role. Its function is to be just a, a plan B backup plan to step in when it's needed so that it can help um, mitigate whatever the conditions are. It really doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's a backup plan. So that's how I've seen them used. That is what is being referenced when you hear the term, well, that's our pony chiller over there. Well, that means that it's, it's separate to the side. It's not a part of the normal staging sequence, typically. And... It's a much lower tonnage, much, much lower tonnage. And once it stages up into the higher tonnages, then um, uh, then we have the primary chillers. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I know I've gotten a lot of questions about this or in conversation I'll bring up, well, they've got a pony chiller and they got this thing and people just go, huh, what a pony chiller? That's what we mean by pony chiller. It's just, it's, it's an extra smaller piece of equipment and some reading I was doing uh, out of curiosity one time I was reading something about this the term is a holdover from like electric motors so there's a concept where you can intentionally put a smaller motor than is needed or than what's supposed to be there on say like a pump or something and because that pump was never expected or designed to operate at full capacity, you could use what they called a pony motor, if I, if I understood correctly. And essentially, you'd get more efficiency out of, out of that. Even though it was a larger pump, you have, because you had the smaller motor, you'd end up being more efficient or something to that effect. And they referred to it as a pony motor. And somewhere along the way, that same concept got translated to pony chillers. I don't know if that's actually where it come from, but in just my various reading I've done over the years, uh, I saw some references towards that somewhere along the way. So I don't know, something to, uh, to think about, something to be aware of for sure. And it's just, it's a redundancy thing. Uh, a well-designed plant that is well kept up with should have redundancy built in in some way some form especially if it's a critical plan if it's a non-critical then who cares but a lot of what we work on is critical equipment and that temperature has to be maintained period so redundancy is a is a is an insurance plan to make sure that happens